All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining me here on the High Ground Podcast. I am very excited here because we are going to talk about Solo, which flew way under the radar for most people. And it's it's a solid jam. Like rewatching it, I was just like I was on for the ride, and I, I had a blast with it. But um, I want to start by kind of going around in a circle. We'll start with uh, with Marilou, um, and I'm gonna ask you know kind of what uh, you know, first of all who are you, your kind of history with Star Wars, and then just kind of um, you know your thoughts on on Solo, uh, just kind of a brief where you rank it did you like it that type of thing so uh mary lou okay so my name is mary lou i go by miss eggy on tiktok which is where i do most of my stuff and i love star wars um i've been a fan my whole life grew up on the original trilogy and saw the prequels in theaters and saw the sequels in theaters I did not see this one in theaters. <laughs> um, uh, I fell into that trap. I, uh, I, we had just seen The Last Jedi, and I liked The Last Jedi very much, but when this film was announced, I was kind of confused. I, was, I figured that they were um, going to, this was like the first in a, in a series of origin story movies that they were gonna do, which is fine. I, I'm personally kind of over origin stories i i'm just sort of tired of them but um but i get why like you know it's fun to to take our these characters we know so well and go back and see them um but i did not see this movie in theaters my best friend did and she contacted me and she was like you know solo is pretty good it's actually really cute and i said no man it I don't know, dude. Like, I, I, I just, I love Han Solo. I love him, but I just never was all that interested in his backstory. I just kind of figured he had, a, you know, was a space pirate and did some smuggling and that was it. But she said it was good. And I'm happy I listened to her because I saw it after she had bought it on Blu-ray and she, and she like basically kidnapped me. And she was like, no, we're watching Solo. Like, you're going to watch it. I was like, okay, we watched it. And I, and I was like, all right, this is actually pretty cute. This is actually pretty good. I really enjoyed it. I watched it again today. I still really like it. My uh, husband was a non-believer and I watched it with him and he was like, okay, that was pretty good. And so I like this movie a lot. It's, it, there's, there's so much to enjoy. I think the main thing I love about it is that it's just so charming. It's, Mm -hmm. It's, it's so easy to like, and I'm very confused by its hate. So yeah, I really like it. I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, saying your husband was a non-believer, did anyone else think shun the non-believer? No. <laughs> shun. <laughs> that's, that's a pull. <laughs> that's a, all right, all right. Anyways, Ooh. before we go, uh, <laughs> Jacob, uh, your, your little uh, intro. Yeah. So I have been watching Star Wars for, decades and a lot of people get bent out of shape when i mentioned that yes i've seen all of them in theaters because i'm that one guy on tiktok that's that old <laughs> uh, but it's not like i'm a better fan for having seen them sooner uh, my kids are just as big of fans as i am probably bigger in some ways uh, but i still I, I mean literally 43 years that i've been involved my entire life with star wars and it's the first thing i saw in the theaters uh probably the first two movies I saw in theaters were the first two originals. And uh, so I really liked this movie. And there's a lot of reasons I'm sure we'll get into why, at least my theory is on why it bombed at the box office. It has nothing to do with the quality of the film, in my opinion. I think Ron Howard and company should be very proud of this movie. I think everybody involved should be. Uh, I will admit that it was a little bit uh, some things were lost on me because it had been years since I saw a lot of the Clone Wars sort of tie-ins. And so mm-hmm. having rewatched all of Clone Wars and then season seven and then watching this movie for like the third time, it, it was so much clearer, some of the tie-ins. Yeah. Not totally necessary to get the movie though, but it made it even better. So I think it's a fantastic movie. Um, it's not in my probably top three Star Wars films, but I mean, there's not a single Star Wars film that I dislike. So let's put it that way. 
I like Absolutely. <laughs> Just because it's not in your top three doesn't mean you don't like it. And it's, exactly. It's hard to get people to understand Listen that. Up, everybody. <laughs> uh, Alexandra? Hi. Um, <laughs> my name is Alex. I go by SoCal Costumes. I think that's still my handle on TikTok. Yes. But I let's go with that. There, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I was introduced to Star Wars when I was five. My parents were watching ESB. And I walked in and watched it from about the halfway point of Hoth. And then it was, I want to say, oh, God, it was probably like 10 p.m. And they were like, okay, off to bed. And this is right when uh, Luke fell down the shaft. So I thought that was the only Star Wars movie. I thought Luke died. I didn't believe Darth Vader. Um, and I didn't know that, like, that was it. Um, and then I want to say... I think I was about seven because my siblings were five then and my parents were like okay let's do the sit down Star Wars watch and so we went through all of them well all the ones that were out so far and then they took me to go see uh, Revenge of the Sith in the theaters and my mom said that she thought about covering my eyes during the volcano scene but she didn't um, which might have been a mistake because then I was completely in love with Star Wars <laughs> and <laughs> I was all about recreating that Mustafar scene and uh, was in love with Star Wars ever since. Um, I did see Solo in theaters, um, but I also really, really liked The Last Jedi. Like, really, really liked. So I wasn't, I wasn't really involved with any kind of boycott. I, I honestly, I didn't see a lot of it. Um, I was kind of unplugged from social media at the time. I love Solo. I think it's a great, fun, heist-typed movie. Um, I think it's got that kind of different vibe that Rogue One also has um, that we kind of needed uh, during the sequel trilogy. And I do hope that they do a second solo movie because that would be really fun and I want more. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you saw uh, Revenge of the Sith in theaters? I think I was seven. <laughs> Like the perfect I age. I saw I no, baby. You're not. I, no, I saw not at all. um Phantom Menace when I was eight. You're fine. It's like the perfect age it for is. like oh, oh it's so I funny. Was already, I graduated and got married like three weeks before that movie came out. <laughs> yeah. I was old. I am old. But hey, listen, yeah, it's we're nice all to be young. young. Hey, you know, we, we all get there. And that's that's the beautiful thing. That's why I love finding out when people got into it because it changes so much stuff, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's all, yeah. it's even uh, a, a dude named Kev let me know that he didn't see The Clone Wars until it came out on Disney Plus. I mean, he just got into all of this yeah. stuff. Stuff like yeah. that. I know it's interesting because you have a different view. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I saw it. With the tattoos, right? Like, of Star Wars, yeah. so he was into yeah. the movies, but yeah. he's now fully in on all the media, I think. Exactly. What were you gonna say, Alex? Oh, I saw the, the Clone Wars animated movie in theaters. Like, Heck yeah. Yeah, it, <laughs> and I remember coming out and like loving it and then finding out like as an adult that like some people really disliked it. And I was like, what? Like but that was cute. just like a cherished memory in my head. Yeah. And like, it was, insane to me to hear that people disliked it when i was an adult like <laughs> and, I and quite frankly it. it's cute yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. frankly that's how i felt walking out of the last jedi i was like man people are gonna love this film but uh you know then, then things happen but yes i did see solo in theaters uh and and i enjoyed it uh, it was a fun ride but it wasn't until um, a rewatch of mine when it first came to Disney Plus that I was like, oh, no, I was like sleeping on some of the stuff. Like it's, it is solid and action packed and it literally leaps from one situation to the other. And so it's, it's an enjoyable film and I think it doesn't get the due respect it deserved because, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about some of the stuff that happened when it was uh, being launched. But first I want to do a, a quick lightning round, right? So just real fast. Who's your favorite character on, on the uh, on the crew and why? Uh, that's why I'm going to start with Jacob. I'm going to have to go. Uh, it's so tough. Uh, it's just real fun. But I think on the it's between Solo and Lando. I, I thought in terms of performance, Lando was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 
I, I don't think they could have ever picked a better young Lando. Uh, but I just, I'm a Han character uh, lover through and through. I've always identified with that guy. Uh, so I'll say it's a tie. Okay, nice. Uh, Alex? I feel like this is an unfair question when I cosplay Kira. Like, excusing <laughs> Han. I feel like I have to excuse Han because I feel like that would be such an easy choice for me because I love Han so much. So secondary, Kira. All right, nice. Mary Lou? Um, trying to think, because they all have, like, such a wonderful appeal to them. And I'm, I'm assuming, like, when you say member of the crew, you're, you don't, like, do you, do you mean characters overall in the movie? Or just so, members of the crew. When I say crew, and in, in the email, I actually had a list. I actually mean both crews. So Beckett's first crew, okay. as well as the the secondary crew. Okay, because I think that my favorite character of the crew. I mean, I really like I really like Aldrin Ehrenreich as Han. Like I I have a whole spiel for just praising him. Um, I really like Han. I really like. I really like Kira. I like Lando. Um, but I'll say, I'll, is, uh, you know, Alex said Kira and Jake have said Lando, so I'll say Han. I'll, I'll take the Han helm. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> and I'm going to come through here with the hot take. Um, I'm going with Rio. With I Rio, love Rio. Yes. Violet. Just every, every moment with him was like magical and just made me smile. And uh, from the first scene of him following him, holding a gun and then like other hands come out of it and hike up his pants uh yeah and, if i thought about the first crew that's who i would have picked because what, what was the line uh you, you've never known comfort or whatever until you've fallen asleep <laughs> in his arms or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know about Falling that asleep in a wookie's arms <laughs> yeah that's that was a great and, and to hear uh to hear the voice of that you know that's uh What's his name from uh, director? I'm suddenly blanking because it's late in the day. Uh, I'm on Wikipedia and I can't. Oh, John Favreau. Yeah, yes. that, thank you. That is John Favreau. Okay. <laughs> yeah, John Favreau is the voice of that, and uh, of course, he also did uh, you know one of the Mandalorians and the Clone Wars. Yeah. Big characters, which will I'm sure you've got other podcasts to talk about that one, but <laughs> John Favreau's voice is just I don't know. He such a did such a good job. I thought he did. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. All right, so let's let's, let's start jumping into the film. Um, the first question, I'm going to start with Alex on this one, but I, I kind of want to talk about, you know, because this film is slept on by a lot of people, so my question on the thing was, did we need this film? But just kind of your thoughts on, you know, why, what may have held this one back, uh, Alex? Um. I, I actually got in a very heated debate over this this morning on Facebook. So now <laughs> I'm like ready to go. Um, something that kind of came to me this morning was merchandise. Like there was no merchandise for this film at all. And like merchandise can really make a film go big. I found like, at least for fans, because if you can buy stuff from the film, like it's going to hype you up. Like, in my opinion, if I can buy things from the film, if I can buy things for it, coming up to it, wear it, whatever, I'm going to get more hyped for it. And there was no merchandise for it. Like, at all. And believe me, I loved it. Yeah. Like, yeah, like right. there was a nothing. I, I remember I went to my Target the first day that things were supposed to be released for it, and we had to go ask for things to be brought out. Now, that's my Target. My Target's not great about putting things out in time. But, like, it was like that at like every single target I went to it was so weird um I think them leaving it in May instead of pushing it back to December also mm -hmm. hurt them I think it was it wasn't even six months from when Last Jedi came out to solo release and also it's really butt up against uh I think it was Deadpool and Infinity War it had mm -hmm. no chance mm -hmm. um and it just it, it's such a fun film and I just it frustrates me to no end that it really didn't get the shot it deserved if they had just put it in December yeah uh Mary Lou your thoughts um just about like what held me back uh yeah. okay so or like what would instill doubt well for me so my biggest thing and I guess this is a good transition into talking a little bit about Aldrin Ehrenreich is that which I'm assuming is how you say his name 
Um, <laughs> I, so I wasn't interested in, in watching a movie. <laughs> Can I? Okay. I, I, hey, speak freely. You're my okay, friends. Okay. You're I'm going to speak friends. freely. It, I wasn't interested in seeing a movie that was just going to be on Hans Dick. Like I wasn't interested <laughs> in like, you know, like I just wasn't interested in a movie that was going to, one of the biggest criticisms I think of a lot of fans have towards the way Disney is um, handling Star Wars is that they're focusing a lot on like this original trilogy nostalgia. That's some, how some people feel and just, and, and with, instead of looking for, towards the future. And I, and I think that's a legit criticism, that's fine. I understand why a company would rely on nostalgia. I, I get it. We all know Luke and, and Han and Leo, you know, so there's kind of a reliance there, I think, sometimes. And I just wasn't interested in watching someone do a Harrison Ford impression and have it be a two and a half hour movie about how cool Han Solo is. I was like, all right, I, you know, okay, I've seen, I mean, you can't get any cooler than Empire Strikes Back Han Solo, like it's just, impossible it's he's perfect in that movie so when i watched this film the thing that i was so taken aback by was first off how fantastic alden ehrenreich is because he's not trying to do a harrison ford impression he's just doing his own thing like sure there's mannerisms and and body language sure but he's not it's not this it's not a caricature performance he's just being honest and kind of doing his own thing and i really liked that I liked how much, like, like Han, well, is the hero of this movie, man, he takes a beating in this movie. <laughs> He's, there's, there's very few um, hero shots of him, like, being cool. Like, half the shots of him are him being flung in the mud, thrown back, blown up, like, desperately looking for a way out. I really appreciated that for a movie that, of course, celebrates this character. That's the whole point it also isn't afraid to kind of make him look really clownish and, and make him look like, you know, a young guy just trying to figure it out. You know, he, he's, yeah. that was really cool. I liked that a lot. Um, and yeah, and was just very pleased with, with this movie and how it also is not just focused on him, it's focused on all these characters. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, so I'd <laughs> say that my reservations were, uh, were for not. It's, it's just so enjoyable and fun. Yeah, I, I, I agree, <laughs> yeah, Jacob. Uh, so, I, <laughs> I kind of have the opposite, uh, had the opposite view at least initially, uh, from what Marilu just said. I was wanting more of a Harrison Ford impression. <laughs> like, <laughs> I felt like, this guy, he looks the part. Like I think they did an okay job with the hair and everything, especially when I went back and looked at A New Hope. Uh, you know, his look sort of evolved a little bit in the originals, but uh, he, you know, that was believable, but just a few, the way he said a few things, like maybe he could have lowered his voice, a, you know, a few notes and it would have been like, you know, this kind of sarcasm because Harrison Ford just has that sort of yeah. gravitas, but gravelly voice at the same time. Right. So that was my initial impression, but then I watched them and I gave him a chance, Mary Lou, and I thought he did a great job. So yeah, I, and it was totally believable. And he was so like hopeful mm -hmm. and not cynical like he was later, but that's part of his character development. So I didn't know I needed a, a Han Solo origin story, but yeah, I really liked it. Now in terms of why I think it didn't get a lot of, uh, you know, people slept on it. Of course, there's the last Jedi hate, which also totally surprised me. I thought it's, it's my favorite Star Wars film. And I've, like I said, I saw them all in the theaters. It was my very, favorite first time to watch one in the theater experience and then I've just I continue to like it but so I was excited going to Solo but what I did notice going into Solo was that the trades especially the more tabloidy trades were just brutal to Solo and every rumor that came out oh there's all these production problems and they're firing mm. this person and it's it's a mess it's a complete shit show excuse me but yeah and it wasn't, I mean, Disney and Ron Howard and others took time once, you know, he got the reins and everything to do it right. And I'm glad they did, but it just, all that negative hype, I, I think that's part of the Star Wars community. And that's the people who get paid to make the negative hype bigger than it really should be, yeah. uh, which frustrates me that that's even an industry thing. 
uh, yeah, that irritates me a bit. But, you know, I, I think Disney did the right thing by not covering everything up and like canceling it. Like they just, they spent the money thinking this is still part of our brand. We're not going to make money on this movie. We know it. And they did a good job. So I think they did. Exactly yeah. What they needed to do, Cause they can afford to do that. Yeah. Especially <laughs> like when, when you hear, you know, um, Aaron uh, talk about the previous director, he said he felt like it was Ace Ventura in space. That's what he said he uh, felt like. So um I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad. Too, like in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so all, all everything you guys said all really adds up, right? There is a there is no merchandising. Um, B there is there was, there was fallout from from Last Jedi. They were butted up too close together. Just in general, there was a ton of other much larger productions with the same audience happening at the same time. They also didn't advertise the movie um <laughs> the first advertisement was a 30 second promo uh during the super bowl in february for the movie that that was about to come out and that's i don't know it was, it was too late to start it yeah we had all the production and stuff issues yeah. uh and a lot of people myself included felt like this was a movie we just don't need um and Maybe some of that was intentional in terms of butting up against those huge blockbusters to say, well, of course it didn't do well because Infinity War, and that's one of our properties, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> some of that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm sure it does. But I am, I am happy the movie got made because when mm -hmm. I saw it, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fun ride. So yeah, I want to just go ahead and jump right, right into it. You know, we, we, when we come into the movie, right, they're on Corellia. They're trying to escape. Uh, we see, you know, find out a little bit about Lady Proxima. We see, you know, the little speeder, which is actually based off of a 1977 Ford Falcon, mm -hmm. uh, which is just an awesome touch, right? 77 yeah, nice. Falcon, like, come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, kind of how, how we open um what what do you think about it uh Mary Lou, let's start with you uh the opening the opening is i'm really happy there wasn't a crawl um i think that crawls should just be saved for trilogy films so i'm happy it kind of just goes right in and gives you a a couple of lines of dialogue um i forget what the line is though it's like a like on the streets is a is a <laughs> what is it <laughs> it's like on these streets is a young man looking to make his way it's like so cheesy and i'm just like all right yeah yeah give it give it to me i'll have that in a cup please can i have all of the cheese <laughs> thank you um and we see han um running with you know doing all this stuff uh trying to escape he, he connects with kira and i think one thing that i was kind of surprised by was like they see each other and they kiss and i was like oh, we're just like, we're just going right mm -hmm. in. Like it, for, a, for a while, I thought maybe it was going to be a will they, won't they um, situation like Han and Leia was. And I'm kind of happy they didn't do that. I'm happy that they established that they're a couple, that they're together, that they're trying to escape. Really liked that. Um, then Lady Proxima is the coolest looking thing ever. <laughs> um, she, my best friend was like, that's a puppet that's awesome like it like we're always like looking for puppets like always always and she was so cool looking i i thought her uh her her setup what like her like kind of recruiting these forgotten kids these orphans or whatever and, and making them like collect stuff and i thought that was pretty cool i thought that was um like a classic setup thought that was really fun and their escape is how far do you want to go brandon where they get separated? Uh, yeah, yeah, all the way, okay. all the way to the war. <laughs> all the way to the war. Okay, so them getting but separated. But feel free to leave things for uh, for the other two. <laughs> oh yes, of course, of course. Um, uh, so they, you know, they get they get separated, and there's there's such an element of tragedy there that I think is so. There's such a he's he's all cool and calm until they get separated, and there really is kind of this element of real desperation in his voice that's really cool it's so and really sad and uh i love the empire propaganda advertisements 
yeah. those are really fun. Those are just the energy behind those is join the empire, become, <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh. This Playing is, the Imperial this March is... in a major key. Yes. Was, yeah. 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 So, yeah. It gives me chills just to think about how funny and cool that was. Yes. I've, I've been on a search for that audio since the movie came out. <laughs> yes. I'm just waiting for someone to strip it out of the movie. I just, I need mm. it so badly. Set it as my <laughs> ringtone. Yes. That's such a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Please. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but, and that wraps yeah. it up for, for me. So please, yeah, someone else. Uh, uh, Jacob? <laughs> um, so, yeah. What is it with these villains that, you know, the gangsters are always these big slug or worm-like <laughs> creatures in Star Wars. <laughs> it's just the most grotesque looking. I mean, she's cool. <laughs> but wow. I was like, this is like probably how Job of the Hutt started. And then he just got bigger over time. I don't know mm. how that works. But she, uh, but it was cool. Like, it was so cool to me to see Han having such focus at this point in his life, all the way up until they got separated. And even afterward, like he was working his butt off in order to get back to her. He had a plan. He had a mission. Of course, you know, the Han we knew from later in the timeline, he's just kind of aimless and he just goes wherever, you know, the, the solar winds take him. Uh, it, it was interesting, but then he still had this uh, this attitude about him, like he, he <laughs> the swagger where he just tried to talk his way out of everything. He's like, and, and I just think back to uh, watching The Force Awakens again and knowing that that's where we, you know, end with Han's story, sort of, uh, you know, in terms of him actually being a live character. But there's actually a lot of setups in that movie that I didn't really realize until I went back and watched it again and then watched Solo again. And I thought, oh, like, even how they really tried to hit home. Yes, it was nostalgia, but like the, oh, and 14 parsecs, 12, you know, and then we get the whole uh, 12, uh, you know, well, not if you round down, buddy, you know, <laughs> the whole backstory was awesome to me. Uh, but just the focus of Han was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I love that scene and that you know, floating car where he gets stuck at the end. He's like, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. And, you know, <laughs> and just, just moments like that. Like that's what star Wars is supposed to be about. Even his last name. A lot of people were pissed about, Oh, that's all you got his name. We didn't need that. Come on. It's star Wars. It's always supposed to be lighthearted. There's some serious elements, but I kind of liked how he did it. I thought it was handled well, personally. I mean, I, but I like cheesy stuff. So there you go. I'll take a bucket <laughs> of the cheese. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, uh, Alex? <laughs> I also liked that they didn't have the, the crawl at the beginning, but I loved that they had the like establishing notes because I feel like if they hadn't had the establishing notes, we would have been like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> What's up? Where are we? <laughs> oh, where are we? What's going on? I loved how Corellia looked. I don't know why. It was like so close to how I imagined it from like even reading the old uh expanded universe books which i mean it's different than how it was but like that's always how i kind of imagined it being this kind of i don't know it, it almost hit me there's a lot of areas around my house that kind of look like the establishing shots so like it was just very like yeah yeah that's totally that's totally how i imagined it being that's so cool um i also really liked that they that Han and Kira clearly were already in a relationship. Um, I, I really didn't have to see the setup of another relationship, honestly. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Like, yes. I, I just, I wasn't there for the romantic drama. <laughs> that was a, and also like being so hardcore into Han and Leia too. I was like, oh, don't do this to me. Like, yeah. I, uh, who's this just, lady? I'm, I no, I 100% went into the movie thinking that. I was like, oh, who's this girl over here stealing Leia's Same. man? Like, get away from him. And then by the end, I'm like, oh, I really like her. <laughs> and I feel bad for her and I want better for her. Um, I liked how, like, it, it just kept going. It didn't stop. Like, they yeah. just were like, yeah, let's just get through this section so that we can get to the main portion of the movie. And they didn't, they didn't lag at all. <laughs> um, to the point where when they get separated, you kind of feel it too. You're kind of like, whoa, hold on. No, no, no. This isn't uh, okay. Uh, this isn't how I thought this was going to go, but that's okay, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I cried. I cried. I'll admit it. I cried. I don't usually cry in movies, and I sobbed like a baby. 
I was like, oh, this is, this is sad. <laughs> this is yeah. really sad. Um, but I appreciate how they did his name because even as a child, I was like, Solo, that's not a last name. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> and then it kind of ends up being like, yeah, it was yeah, someone who didn't care stupid. about him. Yeah, it's stupid. It's someone who didn't care about him who just gave him a last name on a whim. And a, a bureaucrat, he stuck with it. A government bureaucrat. Yeah. And having, who, being a government consultant. <clears throat> yeah, I see a lot of that. <laughs> uh, by the way, um, I, found out. I actually met someone with the last name Solo because I also thought that's just not a name. It's not very common. Yeah. It's actually a surname. I'm like, somebody, some immigrant took that from the movie. I, they had to get it <laughs> the same way. Or they came across the border and didn't have a last name. And there you go. Brilliant. Brilliant. I yeah. no longer have an issue with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then obviously the uh, Imperial March in the major key was just so good. perfect. It's so good. And also comes at a moment where you're really not feeling like feeling good. <laughs> like, and then you yeah. hear it and you're just like, oh, this is a mix of emotions. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And the costumes. The costumes of the scrum rats are just, they're, of course, I'm looking at the costumes. I'm sitting there like, oh, look at that costume. Oh, look at that one. <laughs> Uh, that's that's awesome. No, I yeah, I I, I love it too. Uh, my boy uh, Slapknot in the chat uh, also mentioned we get the precursor to the um, the thermal detonator uh, reference. <laughs> like yeah, like that's just that's a, a rock. Noise and with their just... mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and it, but it was it was great for establishing his his character of like he. Uh, my problem going into it is I didn't want to find out that he was a good guy all along and then was just like an asshole in the beginning <laughs> of, uh, of A New Hope. But this, it actually played into that pretty well of no, he's just calloused um, because of the amount of betrayal he's, he's seen. And, uh, but yeah, in that opening, the opening scene is... I know I I just I enjoy it and if you guys ha didn't know there's actually a canon novel that is a precursor to the solo movie and you can actually if you want to watch him and Kira's relationship develop um and uh their their alien friend uh it's it's good I don't want to give anything away but yeah you, you guys should should check it out um all right <laughs> let's go ahead and and move forward and uh whew, uh Sorry, we're moving slowly. <laughs> all right, so let's let's go from all the way from the war through the train heist. All right, so we can kind of package some of this this up. And I mean, I, I love this whole section. But this movie just never stops going. It's just thing after thing after thing. But uh, Jacob, so I thought it was really interesting uh, Beckett's crew uh, how quickly they were established on screen and you just believe that well this is definitely a crew that's been together a while uh the banter between them and just kind of how the audience really didn't know what was going on just like han didn't know what was going on with them and then mm -hmm. you start to figure out the clues and you see them kind of joking and you see the arms fall out you know of rio who's and, the uh, highest ranking officer uh, yeah you are <laughs> oh and they laugh i guess Captain i guess i am whatever <laughs> yeah <was>. yeah <laughs> Uh, really pretty uh, great character work there, I thought. Um, I, you know, anytime Woody Harrelson's in a role, I kind of wonder, like, am I going to like this or not? But, you know, between this and, like, Hunger Games and some of his other roles, I thought he's done a pretty good job in these types of movies. And I just really bought into him being that guy and uh, mm -hmm. sort of being a mentor, but sort of more like my, my older brother was an example of what not to be in a lot of ways. Uh, but also taught me some street smarts. So that's kind of how I see an ally of my brother. We're, we're in good shape. So if you see this, Bubba, we're good. But, uh, but yeah, like he knows uh, that I learned a lot from watching him. And Han is like, you know, I hope you're paying attention. I know I'm jumping at the end of the movie, but Han was paying attention, which was nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're going through, you know, the, the whole war and him just continuing to make his pitch about, hey, I, I need to be on your crew like he's hungry and he wants, you know, the work. And then how he met Chewie, I thought it was terrifying actually to see this creature and the way they just instantly, you know, bonded because he knew a little bit of Wookiee, right? Like mm -hmm. he could say, you know, a few words 
And uh, it's kind of like that's the Star Wars equivalent of I Am Groot because I keep watching you know these <laughs> shows and movies with my kids. I'm like, how do they get so much out of three words? But it, that's you know that's the way the Wookiee language works. But that I I loved all of it. So yeah, that that's about all I have to say on that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Alex, your thoughts on it? Um, I think that that part of the movie has maybe the best pieces of score. Um, the train heist section is like, it's beautiful. I, I listened to that, just that part over and over and over again after the movie came out, just because the, the Sky, Sky Raiders, is that what their name is? Uh, and Cloud Nest Raiders. Team, yeah. Cloud Raiders, something yeah. like that, yeah. Um, I have the Wikipedia open, that's the only reason I have this. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was something like that. Sky, something. Cloud, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, their kind of theme is so good. So mm -hmm. good. Um, I was shocked with Val's death. That was just, I did not see it coming. Um, I thought it was going to be the entire team for the whole movie because that's pretty much with the little marketing they did do. That's kind of how they made it look. Um, so it was, <laughs> I remember my boyfriend sitting next to me and, uh, she says, I think it's something like, uh, it's been a great ride, babe. And he just goes, no. <laughs> and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like, what just happened? Um, and uh, kind of skipping ahead a little bit, uh, Beckett's reaction to her death. I was glad that they gave us that because I feel like um, some Star Wars movies have not given us reaction to death. So... <laughs> uh, I sips I tea loudly. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks off in pain. Um, <laughs> it uh, so I was glad that we got that, and also he he did kind of take it out on Han for a second before realizing, okay, I'm still you know I've still got this debt, <laughs> and I could still die. Um, so I I really like that section of the movie, and again, it just keeps moving. They're the only part that they kind of stop is around the campfire. And I loved that even in that moment, they still chose to give it like kind of a development moment when Beckett gives Han his blaster, the his DL signature 44. blaster. And, and so they didn't even spare a moment in like, yeah, we're going to stop for a second. We're going to have kind of conversation and, you know, bonding time, but it's still a key moment because you still get the blaster. Um, I just, I really, I love this movie so much. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Mary Lou? Okay, so I have a very embarrassing uh, confession. Embarrassing, um, I like it. I like it. <laughs> so ha uh, Han gets captured, or, or, or he's like outed by Beckett, and they're like, feed him to the beast. I'm like, who's the beast? Like, I'm like sitting here, like <laughs> Isaac, he gets thrown in the pit, and you hear the sounds and the groaning. I'm like, Oh, what is it? I wonder what it's gonna be. And it's Chewie. Shows up. I'm like, of course it's fucking Chewie, you idiot! Like I'm like sitting here, like, duh. Um, I totally fell for that. Uh, but it was like, it was so delightful. I'm like, oh, it's Chewie, and um, and they have their moment. And it, and my and I, I'm gonna keep giving my best friend credit because she was the one who pointed this stuff out. She was like, man, everyone in this movie is is like gross, and it's great. Like it's like <laughs> they like like Han is like in the mud like and he's like and Chewie is pushing him down in the mud it's like enveloping him they're all covered I'm like this movie is gross and it's awesome like <laughs> Han is just put through it constantly this isn't you know some polished you know James Bond nonsense like he is just constantly uh just messed up so that was that's such a fun detail then with Beckett's crew I there, there is there is such a tragedy in that because yeah I thought so too I thought oh this is the crew okay this is our crew time to get to get acclimated and then they all die and you're like ooh and, and I think that's the moment where you really start taking in how dangerous this life is what Han is really getting himself into and I think it, it establishes kind of a uh, the darker tone of this movie um, mm -hmm. the other thing. That I, that I actually think is a really cool detail is how we get back, Alex, Alex is totally right, we get back its reaction, uh, that scream and that desperation, but they get off and he's like, well, we have to go to, to Dryden and we have to figure it because like, it's made clear that Beckett's like, 
we can't like he takes a moment to mourn but he's like well uh you in this life you can't stop in this life there is no time to just well i'm gonna take a week like no like there's a price on your head you gotta keep moving i i'm in league with dangerous people if you continue down this road you know kid you're gonna fall into a lot of messed up stuff like this isn't all because up until that point it's kind of all fun and it's a good time and we're gonna do a heist and now it's like well everyone's dead and they're gonna kill me and i gotta go and i think that that's a cool kind of wake-up call for han and the audience of like mm, it's not all fun and games here so that was a really cool detail too yeah i i, I gotta say I, I feel like my favorite like little moment just a little brief moment you were talking about how dirty they are and then so han finally gets in the shower and then chewy enters and he's like we couldn't do this one at a time. <laughs> like, just, uh, just like I totally oh, forgot about that right. segment between the two. That's right. That's great. Chewie's like, I'm naked. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a spoiler. Chewie's been naked the whole time. Uh, <laughs> the other Wookies are wearing clothes. You you don't even know. Um, no, but uh, yeah, the. the specifically i mean the the war scene was was great there was stuff that was cut out because he originally tried to get into the um pilots you know academy and then got demoted and demoted and demoted all the way to that point they ended up getting cut out which is okay because this movie like i said it moves this movie is just like that freaking train where it it doesn't it doesn't stop um, that scene is great i i wish there was like some other way that they could have released it like in an animated short or something because like it is a really great moment for mm -hmm. han but i totally get why they took it out if it had been in it would have lagged yeah it, it doesn't fit in, in it but and there's I, a line I, basically that kind of explained that or a couple of lines that i think actually did the yeah. job well but, but yeah i probably would have liked to have seen that in the movie too <laughs> um but uh, yeah, as as we start start moving during the train heist, first of all, I love the outfits that the the guards or trooper train troopers or whatever the fur and stuff. Yeah, those, those just looked really cool to me. The um, range troopers. Yeah, and uh, and additionally, that's where we got to see you know, first of all Infus Nest come into play, and you don't know what they are. I don't know who this this thing is and he, being all like badass and stuff um and just i will say <laughs> her her voice is almost comically evil and threatening it's like <laughs> it is that's true i almost expected like a little mustache to be on on it so <laughs> twirl it so that they yeah. can they can tie him to the to the train as well but mm -hmm. um no it, it's it's a great touch to introduce them because this is very much a movie about how complicated this universe is there are factions there are counter factions and then there's counter counter factions to that faction that we're all fighting against or with or whatever and sometimes you align sometimes you don't but uh also the fact that Infus Nest didn't get the prize. They both had the fight over it. Neither was willing to give way. And, you know, Beckett was pretty much willing to give his life <laughs> uh, for this. And that also goes for the tone of this movie. It's It was important that this is a light movie because all of the subject matter is really dark. Um, and having Val die right off the bat really establishes yeah there are stakes to this yes yes han and chewbacca are going to live but there's stakes i promise <laughs> but, but yeah also, go, there was go ahead. this idea that most of the characters you can assume their motivations and you're totally wrong or mm -hmm. maybe it's that but it's more it's complicated so like we you know we still don't know a lot about kira's motivation other than she's just trying to survive and she's sort of grown past everything but like Infus Nest not being this gangster, but actually being like a freedom fighter, uh, you know, trying to protect the people. And I know I'm getting ahead there, but uh, just, I think for Han to see that not everything is the way you, you see it on the surface was a good lesson for him, but that's throughout all the characters just about. Just yeah. give me more Kira. <laughs> I just need to know what happened to her. <laughs> uh, I mean, she, she partners with the, the wrong person. It probably doesn't she does. end well. <laughs> yeah, she shocked me at the end. I know we'll get there, but 
yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get there. All right, so we'll, we'll jump forward. Uh, so we get to, to hop on Dryden Vosh's uh, ship during the party. We get to, to see that weird musical act where everyone's off key, um, <laughs> which is, it, all, it blows my mind because, like, sure, they're aliens, but it still sounds bad. I mean, it blows me my mind more that the, the track in the movie is completely different than the track in the soundtrack. Um, it really bothers me. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it's a soprano voice in the soundtrack, like the backup singer, and then in the movie, it's like this baritone. Oh theme, yeah, baritone bass. It's very strange. I have no idea why they did it. That's weird. I mean, they, it's probably one of the many things that got changed after the fact, but because uh, we don't know how much was shot or reshot. That's kind of the weird thing about the movie. But overall, yeah, we we got him going on the on that ship, meeting up with Kira. Uh, meeting Dryden Voss for the first time, and uh, let's go this one all the way through uh, meeting uh, Lando and uh, and L three for the first time. Um, and we'll start with uh, Alex. Um, well, I'm just gonna put it out there that Kara had this really cool hat that got cut out of the movie, and I'm still disappointed to it about it to this day because it was a beautiful, beautiful hat, and it's gone. <laughs> and we have one public photo of it and I'm just really mad about it um I feel like okay I'll just put it out there I'm not a huge fan of the bar scenes in Star Wars I feel like I I know a lot of people are like oh my god the bar scenes I I have always felt like even from when I was a little kid that the any bar scene as soon as they walk into a bar it's going to be 20 minutes before they leave like they just spend <laughs> so much time in bars in Star Wars. Um, great music, always great music. But uh, I, I, they just spend so much time in bars. Um, I love the aesthetic of Dryden Vots's ship. Wow, try saying that ten times fast. <laughs> um, it, I love the gold and the black and the, like, it, it's something that I feel like we got very close to, maybe like the bar in episode two, like, it's, it's definitely, obviously, they're trying to push the class. Um, I still want to know why they're having a party. Like, I just want to, like, is it a, is it a, yes. is it a party ship? Like, is this just what they do, like, all the time? Or is it, like, why are they having a party? What's going on? Um, I like that they introduced Dren Voss as, like, he's clearly vicious. Like, from the first second you yeah. see him, he like stabs a dude, and you're like, "Whoa!" Like, okay, you so take it down um, a notch, sir. Uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, fun and games are over. Um, I love how they reunite Han and Kira. Um, again, I'm glad that they didn't linger on that. They were just kind of like, "Oh, hi, I'm here. Oh my God, hi, I'm here. Um, you know, let's drink too and see where it goes." Um, and. Uh, I like the, the gambling back and forth between, uh, not gambling, but like the stakes between Han and Kira and Dryden and how Kira takes, you know, puts her neck out on the line. is like, no, I'll, I'll go with him. I'll go with him and I'll make sure that this gets done. Um, <laughs> the dialogue between Han and Chewie, like this entire film, but especially in the bar is great. Um, and then the introduction of Lando is just brilliant so technically there's like two bars in this film i guess <laughs> but uh yeah i i loved how they he's already lando like he's already yeah. who he is and you can tell this is just the person he is like it, it, not totally Everything sure of himself about me is true yeah he's been like this <laughs> since day one and i i love that we didn't have to deal with like deal with we didn't have to see a lando that was just completely different than the Lando we already know and love because Lando is such a great character that I kind of hoped he was that way from the beginning because he's, just, he's so awesome. But yeah, that's where I'll stop. <laughs> All right. And uh, Mary Lou, your thoughts? Uh, so Alex is totally right. I was watching it today and I'm like, is this like, is this like a party bus? Does it, does it, <laughs> does this ship like go to different planets and like, pick people up they got tickets how long have these people been on this thing where are they going how fast does it move like what is what why are you here like it's it's so confusing <laughs> to me um but 
they all look really cool and it's awesome when when Chewie brings Han his drink and he already has one with Kira and Chewie's all disappointed I'm like oh my god no (laughs) um love that uh so Dryden Voss all right Paul Bettany is a treasure I love him ever since I saw him in Master and Commander Far Side of the World I'm like this guy is awesome I will watch anything he is in um and of course, I mean, I, it wasn't that much of an excuse. He was in a Star Wars movie. Oh, I guess I'll watch this movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he's, I, but you know, I wasn't sure if he could pull off a villain. I don't know if I'd ever seen him in a villainous role before. And I was curious. I was very curious to see how he was going to play this. He's great. He's evil and that's it. And that's fine. I don't need tragic backstory for Dryden Boss. I don't need, you know, it, it, it works for the movie. This is what this movie needed, especially since there's so many kind of antag- antagonists kind mm-hmm. of everywhere in this movie. I think just having him be bad is the right choice and giving and en- Enfi, is it Enfi's Nest? Enfi? Enfes. Enfes. Enfes, Enfes what, thank you. Yeah. Enfis Nest gets the, gets the, uh, uh, sympathetic kind of angle and that works um so that's really fun then meeting lando donald glover is just i like even people who don't like this movie everyone can admit that donald glover's great his i like i mean i know i I like that he calls him han that's a cute (laughs) nod yes Uh, (laughs) actually it's han but forget it i really liked that I also love, I loved when he sees Kira again and he's like, here, it's exactly how he greets Leia. <laughs> he's such a, he's such an ass. He's such a playboy. He just, hello, like, so good to see you. And he takes her hands and it's, and she, and Kira, and Kira, like Leia knows what's up and is like, okay, yeah, hi, hi, Lando. All right, listen. Or like, you're shady or something. Like how Leia's like, I don't trust Lando. Um, that's, very that's friendly. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> very friendly. That's a little strange. Um, and I just, I, I'm such a puppet. I love puppets so much. Looking at all of the puppetry mm-hmm. and and in this movie is so fun. And all like everyone at the at the sabak table is so different and goofy and fun. Um, and and it's it, it's a great bluff scene. I like I like Lando's cheating method with the card like in the uh, hand apparatus that goes in his sleeve. It's it is it's just it's so funny. You guys are right. It just moves. It moves. It moves on to the next thing, and um, it's it's so brisk and fun. But you never feel like you're being rushed. It's good. Yeah. Uh, also, I have to ask because neither of you guys have mentioned it, and you know, JK, obviously you're next, but. Um, no one's mentioned L three yet, so uh, hopefully we'll. Uh, so so, Jacob, give us the whole thing, and I'll come back to you two for for L three notes. Yeah, so <laughs> I want to start with the hand thing. One of the things that bugged me about the original trilogy, even as a child, is that there's such inconsistency <laughs> with name pronunciation, and I think it's because just it's important to me to get people's names right. If I don't know exactly how somebody, even if it's a common name, but it can be said a few different ways. And when I'm meeting them, I always ask them, can you say it for me? So I know how you want it to be said. Uh, George Lucas didn't give a crap. He said in multiple interviews, like, oh, well, it's just like different dialects, right? Like, it's just fine. People can say whatever they want. But when they say Princess Leah and Han and things like that bugged me so much. But I loved how they explained it away with him just being a jackass about it. (laughs) (laughs) It's Han. Okay, Han. You know, like, Mm -hmm. I thought that was great. L3 was weird to me. I I liked a lot about her character, but I don't know. She's not my favorite droid, but I don't hate her. Um, I thought it was interesting how she's incorporated it into the Nava computer now. Uh, That was, uh, and her whole robot liberation thing, like, there's a whole, like, area of ethics and philosophy around AI now, like in, in the <laughs> real world, where we're trying to even think about, you know, will they, like, what is that even going to look like once we get sentience, if we ever have that singularity where that, that breaks through? And so, uh, you know, these are things I think about a lot in, in the course of my, uh, my career. Uh, so it was interesting to see that kind of in the movie, but like, she's all like, 
yay, you know, robots' rights, basically. Like, she's really uh, trying to, to start the revolution there. But it played into the plot. Like, it, it worked really well. It was a good distraction, if nothing else. Uh, and then, yeah, L3. So, uh, Dryden Voss, uh, I thought, was also very good. I Like uh, Mary Lou here, I wasn't sure. How is this guy going to play a villain? Because I just wanted to, you know, I, I think of him now as the vision. I mean, I've seen him in a lot of movies, but. Uh, he's a helpful I, butler. I like, form, <laughs> what's that? Yeah, he's a helpful butler. Like, how's he going to hurt people? <laughs> yeah, with Jarvis's <laughs> voice. And I kept waiting for him to say, uh, you want to know how I got these scars? Like I was wanting to hear the story. Where did those scars come from? But you know, when I will not know, but uh, I thought uh, his character was right out of the gate. Very, you know, violent, uh, kind of like the, the, uh, the grand master in Thor Ragnarok, except not comedic, right? Like <laughs> where the guy that. melts his cousin He's like with the melt stick. So they played that totally for comedy, but he's playing it like it's just this dude is down to business. And again, Han is so naive. He doesn't understand that there's layers to not just the surface, but like multiple layers deep of what's actually going on. And Kira's just looking at him like, oh, honey, you have no idea what's going on here, do you? And Beckett kind of trying to tell him, like, you really don't know what's going on here. Yeah. He's like, what? What's going on? He's just smiling real big, you know, goofy grin, just being Han, just going through the galaxy like a cowboy. And uh, yeah, I loved all of it. Uh, going up till what part did we say we we're talking through? Oh, just until he met, met Lando and that. that yeah, and Lando, oh, Lando, he's so good. All right, I'll, I'll we'll go on to the next part. <laughs> A lot I can say about Lando. I think yeah. he's fantastic. And then just uh, real quick, uh, Alex L three. Um, L3 might have, I mean, the dialogue in this movie, it's just, it's just great all around. I mean, I don't think any character goes without a good quotable line. Um, but L3 has some of my favorite lines in the film overall. <laughs> but one of my favorite lines is when she's ranting on the way to the Falcon. Mm -hmm. And, um, she says Lando's full name. I think it's like Landonis something Calrissian. And, um, I didn't see this. Somebody else might have caught it, but I didn't even realize that she says Landonis um, until months later. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's so good. And then also that she, she name drops uh, Black Spire Outpost. Yeah. Um, which, of course, at the time, I don't know if anybody was really looking for it, but it was just another Star Wars planet. Um, but now obviously means a lot to us now. Mm -hmm. um, she's just, uh, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary Lou? Um, L3 is, is, a, is a joy. She, I remember, and, I, and I'll, I don't know, Brandon, if you're going to talk about like the reaction to her, is that uh, like just, I, I'll, I mean, I'll touch on it a little bit, I guess. I thought the reaction like, What's this SJW? I'm like, guys, guys, it's a robot, a movie. It's supposed to be funny. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, just, ah. And it's a robot. Um, like, if you can't let it go with that, right? Like, it's not even a person. I mean, is it? But anyway. Yeah. No, you're no, you're right. It's it's just fun. And it's also because she's part of the knows. problem. <laughs> That's what they tell me. Both sides, by the way. You're the actual saying. SJWs, and then I get called that all the time. I'm just like, guys, anyway, I can't be both. What is so this? my my boyfriend just reminded me. It's uh, Landonis Balthazar Calrissian. Landonis. That's awesome. The third. <laughs> the third. The third. The third. The third. The third. He definitely strikes me as as being a the third. Um, yeah. Yes, sure. I can see that. Yes. It's like Lupin the third. It's like <laughs> yeah. Of and course. either an only child or the youngest child. Mm. <laughs> definitely a youngest child youngest <laughs> yes. yeah i agree but l3 is 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 so i it was funny like i really rem, i she kind of reminded she reminded me of myself <laughs> Not, i did at me at work like at my old <laughs> job i never unionized or anything like that but just like alex said like her stomping to the falcon like okay let's go okay what what do you need like just this 
everyone sit down and shut up. Like what, like, you know, just this, this author, this authority of, okay, well, what, you know, what did you fuck up? Okay, I'll fix it. You know, just this, this kind of just very brisk kind of moving, always moving, always going. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that attitude about her. And, um, and she, she's great too. I like her. I love her too. She's, it was really fun to get because we had at first I was kind of um, when I heard she was really sarcastic. I was a little worried because I'm like, well, we just had K2SO and he was like kind of that was his shtick. And I love that character. So I was kind of nervous about, you know, kind of what her energy was going to be. But they d had it differentiated, you know, because K2SO just didn't care about anybody. But she cared about, you know, her her fellow droids and I think that was a that differ that that differential helped um and made her really fun yeah yeah absolutely I mean I I will say she's not among my favorite droids uh, um but her character is so interesting and different than any other mm -hmm. droid that we've we've gotten to see that that's that's what made it refreshing and also having her as the juxtaposition to Lando's character specifically is is what really made it work right because she is you know because in this Lando is a child you know essentially he's he's been successful and he's good at swindling people and she is the reluctant robot mom that just has to like <laughs> deal with him like okay let's let's go <laughs> a lot of people read it as like a marriage too like they're yeah. like a couple kind of it works <laughs> it works <laughs> i need you to do that thing later and he's like okay <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was cool to, to to meet all these all these new characters and especially you know meeting dryden voss like you said he was just evil he was the evil guy and that was extremely important because every single one of the protagonists is morally ambiguous uh, you can't have True. the same thing in your villain uh, otherwise they are not villainous but he mm -hmm. is kind of the chopping block of like you can cross this person you may not get a second chance you may be able to make it up to him but if you cross this person they'll they'll kill you straight up mm -hmm. so well and you never know what's going to set him off either which is yeah like what makes him so terrifying is that I think I can't remember at what point he says the line, but he says, "Oh, you don't want to make me angry." And the way he says it, like he's like laughing through it, and it's like, "Oh, you're no, you're terrifying. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to work for you because I'd already be dead." Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I accidentally <laughs> put one too many sugars in your coffee, and now I have no hands. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, I, and yeah. after he he murders the first person and he makes it clear like ah, there might be a second murder tonight so if, we may have to clean that governor up too. too the guy uh, that he killed they said yeah he said something like he was an important was a regional governor or something like that too so he clearly doesn't care for authority either um i mean he's a gangster so of course not but <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i know i just i just really enjoyed it and plus um this entire movie it's it's always been subtle throughout it but building that relationship between Han and Chewie. Um, I know, Marilu, you'll, you'll appreciate this, but it, it, it's, it reminds me of the Venom movie, of, of Venom and, and Eddie Brock, uh, Chewbacca <laughs> and, and, and Han, in, in a really good way. Um, mm -hmm. Not everyone else likes the movie as much as I do. But, I love that movie. <laughs> but just, you just, back that movie. just watching them, just always having that a constant back and forth, and Chewie's always in the back of his mind and vice versa, where no matter, you know, this is a world of, like I said, morally ambiguous people, except for Han and Chewbacca's relationship, which is just an awesome through line. Um, and then also, I, I love the unique um, alien creatures and things that we get to see throughout these scenes. That's my favorite part of all the bar scenes because it's just normal, but we get to see a lot of wild stuff um, that's just I don't know, really, really interesting. And L Lando was, was just, just great in my opinion, especially the uh, little negotiation of, uh, you know, and plus he's playing, he's sitting there playing cards, but his ship is impounded right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know but it's like all right you know that takes five percent off of your cut and it's like i don't like it 
I don't agree <laughs> with it. But, but I accept uh, it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's so good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, all right, all right. So after this, we, we get to find out, you know, they all hop on the Falcon once they get it off. And we get the, all the Kessel stuff, right? So I, I want to I wanna get us from them leaving to go to Kessel to them returning and uh, making it past the monster. Uh, I started with Alex last time, I believe. Yes. So, uh, Mary Lou? Um, yeah, th- it's, this was... So, I'm usually not... I love space. I love uh, space battles and, you know, and ships and all this stuff. And, oh, my God. And, you know, and, and, I, and I know that I'm basically just skipping ahead to the actual castle run. But um, I... It, but I usually kind of like I kind of am over him after after a couple minutes. I'm like, okay, space fighting. Okay, okay, okay. Lightsabers. Go back to the lightsabers. You know, I'm like, all right. Um, uh, but this, I think, the Kessel Run is my favorite space um, endeavor, uh, adventure, conflict, battle, whatever you want to call it. It's like a, it's a race, right? It's a cat and mouse race. It's it is so. It is so fun to watch. The action is so cool. This this movie also, it should be said, is gorgeous. It's beautiful. It is shot beautifully. It the, Everything is so dynamic and interesting. And the colors are great in this movie. And, and the Falcon just torpedoing through, uh, through. Like, what is it? Is it? Is it a vortex? Like, what? This is not where my Star Wars knowledge is. It, you know, I want us to just call it the Kessel Run, but it's like, well, is it a? It's got to be some sort of vortex. Is just so fun, and I love it. And I love him helping Chewie with the Wookies. I love their their little um, their ruse where where Kira puts on the cape <laughs> and pretends to be. This that outfit's so fire, fun. though. Like, it, it is. I- in the trailer, she walks down and it's like, flowing, and I'm like, "Ooh, who that?" Like, <laughs> yeah. In the in the trailer, I think that's the first image of her is her in this cape, and you think that's her outfit, and it's like, "Oh no, no, no!" It's just this pretend ruse, and that's really fun. Um, and uh, and yeah, and and L and L three's death is so it, and they, they put her in the computer, and it's okay, punch it. It's just it's so fun and exciting. It's really really good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Jacob. So uh, I'll start with where she left off with uh, L3's death. Um, it affected me more than I thought it would. Like by that time, uh, you're so invested in sort of her sass and just her her uh, you know priorities as a droid, and just as a character, suddenly like she means the world to Lando more than the world, more than a single world. And uh, when she's falling apart there, like I actually was sad. Uh, and uh, not as sad as I was for K2SO, just because I connected with that sassy guy a little bit more. But still, I, I thought, <laughs> wow, just the emotion. I think, you know, of course, you got Ron Howard doing this. He's not an amateur. It's not like he just started doing this, you know, a year before this movie. Um, I thought uh, the whole Kessel Run itself, like, that's been such a big part of Star Wars lore and it's been debated for decades. And I remember just even in college, in high school, my friends and I talking about, well, since a parsec is a unit of distance and not a unit of time, you know, trying to figure all this stuff out uh, and then to see it and then to see like jumping, you know, between different, like you can go the long way or as, as we would say in the country, you know, as, as you know, make a beeline or as the crow flies. Yeah. So he, he just decided to punch it, you know, as straight as you could. So, but nobody could do that. But, uh, and I'll admit that at the time, again, I hadn't seen the Clone Wars in a while and sort of, I sort of forgot who like the Pike Syndicate was and I thought, who are these interesting weirdos? And then when I watched it again, I was like, oh yeah, those guys. And then in uh, season seven of Clone Wars, they become, you know, a, more important, like, you know, there's more into it. So just seeing how it all fits in, like, Solo is a great movie if you're connected to a lot of the Star Wars lore, uh, particularly the, the the visual media, like the films and the TV show. And so, but I think it still works as a story for those who didn't know all that stuff. 
uh, I did think Infus Nest was like the whole group. I, like I was confused about a few points until I saw it again, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's a person. Uh, but the the whole Kessel Run was also it was a desperate attempt to fix an already desperate attempt at you know <laughs> doing something. Like it wasn't like he was just doing it, you know, luxury, you know, jet. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know it was the Falcon. And it was always a dump <laughs> in the originals. Uh, but it wasn't it wasn't like a, a leisurely, hey, let's just do the Kessel Run. It wasn't like a race that he entered. Like, in my mind, I guess I was thinking more like the uh, pod race. Like, da-da-da-da, you know, there's this mm -hmm. Kessel Run. I didn't know. I mm -hmm. loved how it turned out. So, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the Cannonball Run or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cannonball Run. <laughs> Another one of the ones I saw early in my life. In the <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, Alex, uh, your thoughts on it? Oh, boy. Um, I do feel like this section of the movie is where it starts to slow down a little bit, which I feel like you also kind of need because the whole way up to this is so fast um, that when you finally get here, it's like, okay, so now you get some, like, chummy time on the Falcon, especially for Han and Kira. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I... I love that they put her in one of Lando's capes. Um, also for the comedic thought that Amelia Clark is so tiny and Donald Glover, while he's not like, uh, he's not Billy D. Williams height, he's very close. And so if you put <laughs> that cape on them, it would be like a, a cap, like it would be a, like a really <laughs> unflattering length for a cape. Um, so it, that's just a funny thought to me. But uh, one of my favorite l3 reactions is on kessel when the doors close and kira takes out the the head pike guy and all you see is l3 go whoa <laughs> yeah <laughs> such a good it's a wonderful moment um her little revolution revolution with the droids and the gonk is like stepping on the control panel and breaking everything um all hail gonk Chewy. yes all of a sudden, I had this love for gonk droids that I did not have before. Power to the gonk droids. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, L three's death. I I feel like I didn't I didn't realize what happened. Um, I think it. I thought, oh well, her head's still intact, so maybe she's still alive. <laughs> um, where uh, I think with K 2s death because he had the dialogue that basically like told you oh he's he's dead um with l3 it was kind of like oh well she probably just fell apart like this is probably just a joke so it wasn't until again more mourning for our star wars characters lando was mourning that i was like oh oh l3 died and i i finally caught up and was like oh my gosh this is this is really bad but i i do think that i reacted more to k2's death than i did l3 um but still very sad and Lando reacting to her death again. So, so sad. And then Han jumps to it and starts piloting the Falcon. It, oh, such a great moment. Um, but yeah, I, I, growing up, I thought that the Kessel Run was a race um, because obviously <laughs> I, did not, I didn't understand what a parsec was. So uh, from the way that they spoke about it, the only thing I could come to a conclusion to was that it was a race. So finding out that it was not a race uh, was a little confusing at first, but I'm good with it now. At the time, I was a little bit mad about it, but I, I was like so looking forward to this race that I thought, you know, my entire childhood must exist. And then <laughs> when it wasn't a thing, I, I was, I, I'll admit that I was disappointed, but I'm over it now. <laughs> Smuggler thing, right? So I yeah, okay. Put that together so either, and I should have, but yeah, I was you, surprised. I I always thought you guys thought it was a race. I I always assumed it was like a smuggler run because like he's like on the run, and he's like gotta get somewhere fast. Or I always thought maybe it was something he was like running spice for Java or something. But I didn't expect it to be. I thought it was just. But who? I thought maybe it was an asteroid field. And he had to navigate it. But I didn't expect this like swirling vortex of doom with a <laughs> tentacle monster. I was like, what is this? This is crazy. But he's like, he's like, I'm gonna show you guys. I forget the library. He's like, we're, I learned back on Corellia from a guy. He died. 
but I won't. Like it's it's so, doing the same he, thing. Yeah, and he's like bouncing. Like it's like the things like bouncing him. It's so funny. The comedic timing is great. Oh my god! Re- really quick, just re- super quick side note. It, just speaking of how funny Aldrin Aaron Reich is, if you guys ever want to see him steal a whole movie away from a group of A-list actors, go watch Hail Caesar by the Coen Brothers. It's on Netflix. He that's a it's a star-studded ridiculous Coen Brothers comedy that they're known for doing. It's got George Clooney and Scarlett Johansson and and Jonah Hill and Josh Brolin and Aldrin Ehrenreich is the newcomer in that movie. He steals the whole movie. He just steals the entire movie. He's the funniest, most charismatic act. Like he's great in it. So if you want more funny from him, go watch that. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I, mm-hmm. I, I love it. Like I, I just think about um, uh, the scene you mentioned, Alex, where, where Kira fights all the people in the control room and then uh, and L3 is like, I've never seen a human do that. And she's <laughs> like, but she goes, oh, that's, that's Terra's Kasi. Um, yeah. And Star Wars Master of the Terra Kasi, it's an old PlayStation video game. I love the crap out of that game. Apparently, it's one of the worst games ever made, but, <laughs> but I mastered that game. Straight I remember up. the entire theater like gasped when she said it, too. Oh, really? Like, they're like, <gasps> okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that apparently means something. <laughs> that means I'm not alone. Okay. No, that's, my boyfriend knew what it was, and he was like, oh, ha, ha. and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> it was a Star Wars fighting game. And it was it was crazy, uh, and I, li- yeah, I, I mastered that game. This is, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's that's besides the point. Uh, no, we we got we got a lot, lot of awesome stuff here. We got uh, we got to see what the plight of the Wookies was. You know, they were slaves here. Uh, the only reason they made it in is because she pretended like she was bringing a Wookie slave. You know, when we first met Chewbacca, he was chained up as a monster. Like right. it's, it's it's crazy, but he getting to see that gets to paint the picture of you know what the Wookiees went through, which is really cool, and it also showed us about Chewbacca and his loyalty because you know he knew knew the one Wookiee. I don't know what they said to each other, <laughs> but <laughs> but they had a connection, and in the end, you know Chewbacca chose to go with them. With uh, with Han and them, and not with with his people. So that's he's he's the only person that had a choice and chose to stay with Han that Han's ever really met. So I don't know. That's that's just really cool uh, for me. Also, the the Kessel Run. I always knew it was a measure of distance, and uh, my understanding of it was that it was you know around a, a cluster of black holes, so the Ma and and you know the distance you traveled is directly correlated with how fast your ship is meaning you can get close enough to the black hole without getting sucked in because if your ship wasn't fast enough then you'd have to take be safe and take around that's that's kind of how i thought always thought about it but um when they were going through the small little section and you see the imperial star destroyer coming through you that visual it's like one of my oh, favorite in Star Wars awesome. because it was just like, oh, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> like, right. right after they said something about how that's never going to happen and then it just shows up. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, uh, so you had a bad day. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, immediately, you know, abort this situation. And so that, that was cool. Um, the showdown with uh, the tentacle monster. <laughs> Uh, and and having them, um, it was just a really really interesting way to put it, and it kind of brings light to why they always refer to the Falcon as as a woman. Um, I I know a lot of people say all ships are women, but this one like truly is if if they have the the AI from L three uh, in it, and I don't know, it's just such a cool scene watching them you know have the outrun the Tie Fighter and and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I had a blast watching it. I also have a hard time believing now also that L3 doesn't make the Falcon break every once in a while just to piss Han off. (laughs) I 100% believe that if he's not treating the ship right, she's just like, well, fine, this broke. What are you going to do? Like, (laughs) I just, I 100% see, see that happening now. Like, (laughs) (laughs) absolutely. Um, Oh, also um, seeing, uh, 
Lando's like cape closet for for one thing. Um, but but like you said, him mourning for for L three's death was a powerful scene because you've never seen him care about anything this entire movie. They're risking their lives and he's sitting in the Falcon recording his own memoirs for, for <laughs> no reason whatsoever. Um, he doesn't care, you know? And uh, yeah, I, it was just a beautiful scene. You know, this, but this whole movie is kind of uh, Thelma and Louise in it where it's just a worse situation into a worse situation and it just keeps like spinning out of control <laughs> and it's also awesome how Han always pretends like oh yeah that's what I meant to do that's why that's why I'm here <laughs> <laughs> all right so they uh oh also there's there's it also sort of reminds me of like a Jerry Bruckheimer film like an end of the world film they're like we broke into this like impossible place uh, and stole the stuff that's about to explode, but we have to go. But the bad guys are there, so we have to escape through this before this explodes. Like there's just all the bad stuff, and it just it makes me chuckle. All right, so they escape with the the coaxium, and they get to uh, to where they're going to refine it. You know. Um, Obviously, emphasis shows up, but I kind of want to go from here through the through the through the end of the film um, and kind of get your thoughts on on you know all those portions. Now, I, I apologize as uh, both Alex and Marilu's uh, cameras failed at one point, so you've all swapped locations. So oh. <laughs> I'm going to start with Jacob. <laughs> all right, age before beauty that works out. So um, <laughs> the whole end of the movie you see Han start to get more cynical, not completely cynical. There's still obviously some stuff that happens, but he starts to, maybe cynical is not even the right word. Um, he starts to wake up to some realities, I think. Worldly. Kind of, yeah. Mm. And he, he sort of realizes maybe things are more complex with Kira than he thought. And then, you know, now he's got this relationship with this new best friend, you know, 190 years old, you look great. I thought that was a great line. Um, he, is paying attention, but he acts like such a dope sometimes. And a lot of it's just an act. A lot of people like, like I'm watching the, the guardians of the galaxy uh, cartoon series with one of my daughters and you know, they are just, they rag on Peter Quill all the time, but Peter's not really an idiot, even though, you know, Rhodey calls him one in, in end game. Mm -hmm. he, he just acts like one. My dad had a famous line. He's like, you know, I'm no dummy. This is just an act. And he was a lot like Han Solo. Uh, although, but Han's still making it up as he goes, but you know, when, uh, you know, his new mentor sort of says, I hope you're still paying attention. He obviously was. And that was a great homage to the fact that Han actually did shoot first and only in the original Han movie, but only hey, so that's what that's I said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Han shot only, but you know, it's fine, whatever. But, uh, he did shoot first this time. There was no mistake about that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Yeah. I thought, you know, how they left it was interesting. I, I loved how the Falcon was immaculate and it had this escape pod and we're like, what is that extension? And then he just shoots it off like it's part of that whole Tesla run thing. And uh, it just now, and it's a dump every other time we see it, which I think is fantastic. But like, whoo, it actually was a nice looking ship at one point. Mm -hmm. doesn't care. He made a lot of special modifications himself. Uh, and sure, yeah, L3, I think you're right about her pissing him off, you know, just breaking down because he doesn't clean her, he doesn't, you know, he just tries to make her go fast. But yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll also, JK, if you're, I also want to include your thoughts on the Infus Nest reveal. So I loved it. I actually, I, I movies don't surprise me very much these days, like it's been years until. The Last Jedi, and it surprised me like three times, which is one of the reasons I love it. It's one of the reasons a lot of people hate it, but uh, the fact that it surprised me. Um, the Infus Nest reveal, I saw something coming, but I didn't see that coming. And then another reveal when it's her, but it's not actually her, it's the old lady. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty fantastic as well. I love the switcheroo stuff that's going on, and so Han's starting to figure out that there's more to fight for than just himself. Although he sort of loses that again, he gets cynical by the time of A New Hope, but then he, you know, that's not coming out of nowhere when he starts to fight with the rebellion. So I, I just, I love to see that sort of uh, beginning of that part of his, uh, his own character journey. 
Yeah, definitely. And um, uh, Alex? Um, oh, God, the end of the movie is like, I feel like I still have not dissected the whole end of the movie. Like, like you said, the, the switcheroo stuff, I just, I feel like there's, there's still things that I'm missing that I still haven't quite picked up on yet. Like, okay, so, so uh, who actually had the coaxium and who didn't have any coaxium at all, but who was pretending that they did have coaxium and who did Dryden think have coaxium if it wasn't, if he thought what Han had was fake, then who had the real coaxium? So that was the real coaxium. Like it was just, I, every time I watch it, I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, no, that was, that was the real stuff. Okay, it was the real stuff. Okay, I'm not crazy. Um, I loved, loved the whole reveal of Enfys Nest. First of all, I love the shot. It was in the trailer. I still love it. Like a lot of the time with trailer shots, I like kind of see where the shot is coming. Um, still my favorite shot where it shows, Enf I think it's Enfys in the background and it shows the side of Han and he flicks the, the, uh, mm -hmm flap yeah. off his off his uh blaster still love that shot it's so old school western vibe and oh i love it um i love that lando just up and left <laughs> like, no no dialogue just just <laughs> gone i just see him stewing and just being like i'm just gonna leave i'm just gonna leave but that's just it like bye um i'm amazed that it took off <laughs> honest um the i one thing that i'm not 100 percent on board with with this film is like the whole thing with a new hope was that han was like peace out bye i'm gone and then he has a change of heart and he turns around the very last moment he could have and kira says i think twice that han is actually the good guy and i think feel like I would have liked it more if they had left it a little ambiguous like we know that as the audience we don't have to be told that because we know what he does in A New Hope but Han doesn't know that Han still is playing the oh, I'm the cool guy vibe and so she says it to Han that I'm the only one who knows who you really are you're the good guy um and then she says it to Emphis Nest differently but still the vibe um and i feel like we didn't need to be told that like we knew that we knew that haunt this whole thing is an act and that he is actually good deep down inside that's actually who he is um i still feel so bad for haunt at the end of this movie <laughs> like his life got better and that now he has chewy like that's his bud that's his mm -hmm. best bud for life but he still got ditched by his girlfriend totally stabbed in the back um had a whole bunch of people who he I think admired and trusted turn around stab him in the back and he probably hasn't slept in like two weeks so <laughs> uh, and then Kira oh my goodness my girl my poor girl I don't think we really understand how bad her situation is until she communicates with Maul like I think when you see Maul and you realize that it's Maul you're like oh you're dead like you're probably dead in the next, like, not now, but in the next five years, you're dead. You're in dead somewhere. Nobody cares about you. It's just, it's so sad. And this is why I need a second one. I just, I need to know where she is. A book. I would be good with a book. <laughs> a comic. One comic. I'd be good with. Yeah. Um, how mm -hmm. Dryden dies is just so fitting. Like, it just felt so good. <laughs> um. And then obviously the whole thing with, with uh, Beckett. It's just so satisfying. I, again, it's another kind of bittersweet thing where you, you wish Han didn't have to do it because you don't want to have to see Han go down that path. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, okay. He's Han Solo now. Like he is 100% Han Solo. Um, again, I, yeah. I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep saying it till the day I die. I love this movie so much. And that's why I'm so happy to have you. <laughs> uh, well, Mary Lou, your thoughts? Uh, thoughts on the ending. So uh, three things come to mind. The first is I really like the theme. I, I, love, the, I love the part where Va, Dryden Voss is like taught when, when Kira is like going to kill Han. And, he, and Dragon Boss is like, she's done things that you don't even freaking know about. And it's this idea of 
how people, I think one of the biggest themes of this movie is how people change. People change, you know, like Kira changes, Han changes, everyone changes, everyone, you know, the, the people that you knew, you know, growing up, it was them against the world. And then they're separated for three years and things are different now. You know, and Han so badly wants to go back to the way things were, but he can't. And Kira has gone too, too far in, in her need to survive. And I just think that everything she does, even though she betray, you know, betrays him, you know, I'm like, I, I get it. Like, you know, I think part of it was that she knew that she was still in with Maul. And she, if she's associating with Han, she's going to pull Han in. She's like, I'm not pulling Han in with Maul. Like, he'll kill him. And I understand, you know, and I know the, the trope of I left to protect you. I know that's kind of an old trope, but it works here because we, the audience, know how dangerous Maul is. It isn't just some. That's every some episode base... of Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> told I could never get into Arrow for that, for that reason, I think. It's this, but, but we, the audience, it's not just some faceless guy at the end. It's Darth Maul. We know who Darth Maul is. We know who he's capable of. My favorite thing after this movie came out were all the people who hadn't watched Clone Wars. <laughs> and they were like, Darth Maul's alive? And I'm like sitting here like crazy, right? Like, oh, right. Like, you didn't know that? Oh, yeah. He had spider legs for a while. It was a whole thing. Um, he had a friend that was a snake. Like, love that guy. I loved his buddy. Um, but it you know how we know how dangerous Maul is and we know that Kira's like I'm not pulling you into this so that's great the next thing is um I love with uh Entis Nest I I am so fascinated with masks and Star Wars the re the reveal of taking off a mask because if we've noticed and it's actually kind of something we should have seen coming every every time there's a mask reveal in Star Wars it's never who you think it is so we should have seen it coming that Enfys Nest wasn't who, you know, wasn't this big, scary, bad guy. It was actually a teenage girl, you know. And, and yeah, but, like, every time someone takes their helmet off, it's never who you expect. Vader takes his helmet off. We're expecting this big, scary guy. Oh, it's this old man. Finn takes his helmet off. We, we, we expect, you know you know we expect some some like grizzled you know warrior willing to you know die for the empire and it's a scared young man you know we kylo ren takes his mask off oh it's a monster oh it's a young man you know Enfys Nest takes her mask off oh it's a young girl it's never who you expect it's a good thing to remember with masks in star wars love that vader takes off his mask and you're like oh it's billy joel modern day <laughs> it's he looks like a little pickled egg we're like oh you're so cute <laughs> Um, and the other thing it's my now this is my one of my only real critiques of the movie this is just something that I think didn't quite land the way that they wanted to it's my one big I'd say my one big critique is that the theme of this movie is you know Han you can't trust anybody you can't trust anybody Han everyone's gonna you know Beckett says everyone's gonna betray you and blah 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 you know it's just you against the world and all this stuff and Han's like you're right, shoots Beckett. All right, my best friend who I just met who's a Wookiee who totally will never betray me. Let's go. Like, it's, it's like, and I get that it's planted that, ha, that Chewie's not going to betray him because he chooses to go with them instead of his, his family, his tribe. I get that. But at the same time, I'm like, that kind of missed, oh, just missed the mark a little bit there. It, it didn't quite land, I think. But I mean, it's also depending on the audience to know and that Chewie's never going to betray Han. So it's, it's, it's fine. It's, I just think like, it'd be funny if I imagine someone who's never seen Star Wars watching this movie, like he just met the furry dog. Why is he just the furry dog? Why are you trusting this guy? Like, so, but other than that, I mean, it's just a strong movie. The fight at the end's great. It's so kinetic. The camera work in this movie is great. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, and it's, it's just a fun, it's a fun movie. I think, the, I think the line at the end of, uh, when she's when uh and this is and this is like you should join the rebellion he's like don't hold your breath kid i'm like ah he's like i think he says kid and it's it's it reminded no. me of you know of harrison for you hold on you go get cocky kid it's seeing that kind of take form is great yeah uh yeah <laughs> and and the end and i i kind of had it ruined because uh my buddy travis who's been on the, the podcast for the first few episodes uh 
we're in the theater watching it. And he's like, I think that's a girl. And so when she takes off the mask at the end, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a big reveal. It, it was shocking how innocent her face looked though. Like yes. it wasn't like wizened and like scarred and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that was cool. Um, also, I, the, the end of it, uh, this is the exact opposite of you, Alex, but I actually loved that conversation between Kira and Han um, when, she's, when she's talking to him because this entire time he's trying to convince everyone how badass he is, how dangerous he is. <laughs> and she's like, you're a child. <laughs> <laughs> like we you don't even know like it, expect, like the first time they see each other he's like i'm working the deal and doing all this stuff and then beckett shows up she's like oh you're with him oh okay uh you know i i, I know where this is going now um so yeah, i i loved that conversation because it, it did put into place how you know like like we said, he, he did have the heart, but literally every person that he has ever trusted has betrayed him. So uh, I thought that was cool. And also the end of the movie really made me really enjoy Beckett. When he runs in the Beckett and he's like, so Dryden's dead. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, so Kira killed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, and it goes to show you that uh, he, he's like, you know, you told me people were predictable. That's Beckett saying he can protect everyone except for Han doing the right thing. Uh, I, don't, I, I just really, that note really kind of struck with me, um, except I don't know how Han got ahead of Beckett from where he was, but that's a whole <laughs> side topic. Um, we also got to see, you know, Amal appeared again and had uh, far more speaking lines than he's ever had in any Star Wars movie. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> um, it was just cool to see him. That was fan service. He didn't have to ignite the lightsaber and, and that stuff. Um, but we got to see it and, it and it happened and I enjoyed it. And I'm not ashamed of that fact. So that's, uh, that's me. Or should you be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah enjoy it enjoy it. sometimes fan service is it's it's like a little burst of serotonin that you need yeah exactly it's like this is needed in the film but it's beautiful i always find it weird and yeah you know, i'll just say you know i'm probably in the minority of this i don't care it's the same thing i felt with endgame why shouldn't there be fan service yeah i, mean, I agree you know like why is fan service a negative thing isn't that what we we're fans isn't that what we want right. like give us what I, we want why is mm-hmm. why is that an insult to you know I, I get it when people are like well can't they be more creative it's like well weren't the fans being creative when they said they wanted that thing like if uh, us fans especially the star wars uh star wars fandom and i think uh i think jj said this and it might have been during tfa it might have been afterwards he said we can't come up with things fast enough like the the fan base is just so fast to come to things but, oh well what about this oh well what about this they can't do anything without someone having said it at some point um, oh sure yeah. and and you know it, like i i love solo because it is just like here here's a a dinner plate full of of fan service you know it, <laughs> And I'm totally happy with that. I, I ate it all up. Like, it's, <laughs> it's so good. And I will continue. It's one of my favorite rewatch Star Wars mm-hmm. films. Um, because you can just, you, you know, it's not a part of a trilogy. You know, you can just yes. sit down and watch it and enjoy it. You know, Ro- that's my one difference between, like, this and Rogue One. Is you leave Solo with the kind of epilogue with him getting the Falcon and yahoo! And, and off he goes, right? And you're like, oh, now he's Han Solo. Where Rogue One, you just kind of go, oh, sad, but there's hope, but sad. <laughs> like, I just watched a whole bunch of people that I love die. And Solo, while you watched a whole bunch of people that you love die, you still ended with Han Solo being Han Solo, you yeah. know? And, and, and he's just so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and you're absolutely right. I, my, my, my big thing is, 
in this case, you know, it works really well here, is the fan service actually serves the plot of it. it yes. Take you out of the movie to go, hey, look at this thing. You know, it's, it, it serves, <laughs> you it serves remember? the plot. So. Do you remember the thing? That the, the remember? Remember? <laughs> like, it's like, no, it actually is for the plot. Like you said, Brandon, it's a perfect way to put it. <laughs> All right. So why don't we go ahead and, and round this out? Because we, we hit the end of the movie. So I want to hear kind of your, your final thoughts. Um, what do you want to see going forward? I mean, I know, you know, you definitely want to solo too, but just in, in general, what, what would you like to see moving forward? And also, uh, which iteration of Han Solo do you like best? We have several movies. We have Solo. We got comics. We got whatever. Just whichever one is your favorite. And I will start with Alex. Um, okay. Oh, so, also, I'm sorry. Um, also include where we can find you and, and your stuff so I can put it on. I'll start with that one because I'm forget, going to forget my handle again because we learned this at the beginning. I can't remember my <laughs> <No>. handle. Uh, <laughs> so Cal Costumes on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, even though I never tweet. Uh, I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, my final thoughts for the movie, I, I mean, I kind of already said, it's just fun. It really is. And I wish people had given it a shot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I hope it gets a follow-up of some sort. I did not think that Kira was going to get a Forces of Destiny, and she did. So mm-hmm. um, I, I hope that they at least give us some form of closure. I have a feeling it'll be another kind of short like that, or it'll be something later on that they'll be like, oh, well, remember what happened to Kira, and it'll get thrown in somewhere. Um, which I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> it's just, I need to know what happened to her. Um, my favorite form of Han Solo is either Han while with Leia, because I feel like he's his most honest and his most at peace when he's with Leia and Han in Ben's memory. Cause I just, I just sobbed. I just sobbed through that. Oh. So. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful and uh Marilyn? um okay so i i i'm gonna go with alex as well with um giving my handle first uh, miss eggy at tiktok miss eggy 28 on instagram and miss eggy one i think it is on twitter i i do tweet sometimes so that's 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 fun um so I think this movie is really cute. I think that this movie just is, as someone who is always thinking like thematically and, and, and like academically about Star Wars, I think this movie is, this is the movie that I put on when I'm folding laundry. You know, it's like, it's just a fun movie. It's fun to watch. It's fun to enjoy. Um, I love showing it to other people because then everyone goes, oh, this is pretty cute. I'm like, yeah, man. Um, uh, and my favorite, my favorite Han I agree with Alex. I, my favorite Han is specifically uh, Han Solo from Bloodline. I love Han Solo from that novel because it's mm. after, like, Leia and him are older, um, and they've been married for a long time, and just how much... It's so fun to watch this movie and then remember back to that book. He's so... He, listen, he listens to her. He's, he's actually... I kind of had this headcanon that like Han was kind of a shitty partner. And, and that book really changed my mind. Like I always liked Han and Leia, but I was always like, oh, you know, he probably, you know, maybe he took off or something. He was kind of an asshole. But like that book totally changed how I viewed him, especially in terms of the sequel trilogy. He's so kind in that book and he's so supportive and he's so, there's a sadness to him that is so palpable. They, they just understand each other. It's like, even though it, something obviously eventually happens, I, obviously after Ben uh, goes missing and, and joins the First Order and all that stuff, um, obviously that rep- probably represented the, the destruction of their marriage or, or the separation of their marriage. But up until that point, you know, this is a really, they're a really good couple and they're really supportive partners. And I think uh, older Han Solo definitely has my heart. I, I think I love him. Force Awakens Han Solo is iconic he's icon i just <laughs> this is not how i thought this day was gonna go like he's just like this grumpy old man <laughs> and i'm just like oh, oh you're cold 
Oh God. Oh God. What do you, what is it? He's, he's like, women always figure it. He's like, or he's like, Hey, solo. And then, and he's like, you just call me solo. Like, all right, buddy. Like, I don't know you like that. You're like 12. What are you doing? Like, so cute. So I, I love this movie and I really enjoy talking about it. This is so fun. <laughs> Alex, your, your, your enjoyment. I want to, pa- I want to package it. In, oh, am I here? Okay. I want to take Alex's enjoyment of this film and package it into a type of brand of tea that would just give me like, energy because it's so wonderful. I love it. I love when people love things. It's so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. And uh, uh, J. Kev, you're, you're batting cleanup. <laughs> all right. So on all the socials, I'm J. Kevin Parker, the letter J. Kevin Parker. Uh, on YouTube, I have actually rebranded my channel as a an actual brand channel, and it's called Epic Worldview. And I've got only one video there, but I've got one I've been working on for like two weeks, and they keep kicking it out for freaking copyright, thanks to Disney. Uh, so I, I'm trying to change it up enough that it it you know doesn't violate whatever. So I'm gonna have a lot more stuff on YouTube. <laughs> Eventually, maybe TikTok will get their head out of their rear end and unshadow ban me on my second account that i've had to create i don't know what's going on there but anyway i'm there uh i yeah this uh this film's really good i I love it it's what george lucas said star wars was supposed to be it's a rip roaring good time that's you know a direct quote from him on many occasions where like we take these movies too seriously sometimes and like the people that got their shorts in the knot about how he got his gun, we didn't need to see the blaster and the, his name and all that stuff. I loved every second of it. I wanted more. Like I love that. So my favorite Han, it's it's Han from Inter, uh, Empire and uh, Jedi. Last uh, sorry, Return of the Jedi. Like the sass. I just. He's not really a crappy partner, uh, Mary Lou, but I also kind of thought that, like, am I going to be that way with my wife? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I've been married. So, so it's not all right. Um, it's just, it's a personality type, and it rubs a lot of people the wrong way. I know because I do that to people, and I don't mean to, but, you know, it's uh, absolutely your worship. Like, I just <laughs> love it. And the whole, I love you, I know. Like, that's the last thing you're going to say, really? Yeah, that's something I would say. So, yeah, that's my favorite version. But I just, I love Han all the way through. Force Awakens, Han, I also really love. Um, old Luke is my favorite Luke. But uh, but I think Return of the Jedi, probably my favorite Han. Okay, nice. Good choice. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to thank everybody for, for coming out and, and talking with me. Uh, personally, for me, I I actually need to to redo my my rankings of the films because since I've been doing this podcast it's it's changed because I'm rewatching and all of us talking about these things bringing out new points and stuff uh, and Solo is is moving up the list for sure uh, like you said it was a rip roaring good time it's it's a it's a great film um, and it accomplishes everything that it sets out to accomplish and it's yeah it's it's solid i mean yeah there's certain things we may not have needed to see and he you know but i don't know that's that's kind of that nitpicking territory so i i don't really worry uh too much about it um as far as my favorite han solo i i got to say Honestly, you have me thinking, Marilu, by, by mentioning Bloodlines, because I love that book so much, and he's like off with his racing career and all this stuff, where they're, him, him and Leia are just both two very motivated people with different interests who love each other very much, and so it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a different type of, of relationship, uh, and that's, that's beautiful, but in the end, I still always come back to to empire especially with with harrison ford you know with the original writing for the i love you scene uh being like no and i love you too and i've always loved you like a whole bunch of words and he's like also is not gonna say this (laughs) and so you know harrison ford ad-libbed the i know and Mm -hmm. those two words just encapsulated it uh one 
last thing I did also want to touch, because uh, we had the return scene of Han going back to meet Lando and getting the Falcon. And we got to see the first uh, play fight thing that uh, Han does, that Lando does to Han in Empire. That was great. And then him stealing the card, like, uh, you have everything you need so over there? Uh, yeah, I just, I just love it. So it's, it's a great film. Well, I got to see Sabak, like, and how he yes. got it. Yeah, that was really great. That's actually uh, one complaint of mine about the movie is because that's one of the things that I loved from the expanded universe was the way Sabak worked as a game, and they changed it for this film, and you know they they put it you can buy it for and and the thing. So it was an entirely different game before, which was a better game in my opinion. That's the only thing that I that really strikes me. But yeah, it's just I love poker. It. You know, it's just poker. In the now it's just poker. Much. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. But I don't know how it was played in the extended universe. But I bet it was way more creative and interesting. Yeah, like uh, before you would have cards and then. You, if you liked your card, you'd put it into this field, which meant it stayed that card. And then there would be like a randomizer thing that would change all of your other cards. Oh, so okay. it, it was like a weird poker blackjack mixture that was like digital, and it was, it was super cool. Um, but but yeah, that's a whole side. This topic. was the back alley version, the poor yeah. man's version. <laughs> But yeah, I just want to thank everyone for coming out again. I always love talking about Star Wars with people who love Star Wars. And like uh, everyone who's come on here, I always end up good friends with. So I, I appreciate you coming on with us, Alex. I've had Marilyn well, and Thank you for Jacob. inviting me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Your content. This was awesome. so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you guys so much for joining you. And may the force be with you. <laughs>